Hello, I'm Joe Dowden and I've painted since I was a child. All my life I've wanted to paint what I see the way I see it and I've developed techniques that have allowed me to do this. Well today we're going to be talking about some of those techniques so that you can achieve reality in your painting. If you want the viewer to go right down into a painting, to get involved with it, have a high horizon, that'll give you a deep foreground. Now with that we can start to deal with perspective. The way shingle behaves on a beach is that the sea hurls it all over the place, it's just randomly thrown around. There are some big stones, many small stones. But to start trying to dot them around is very difficult. It's very difficult to get that randomness and to get a true perspective on it. But there is one way that we can start off the whole process. We can get a kind of a key for it. And we do this. Now, imagine if you will, a kind of mosaic floor pattern superimposed on the ground. And that's what we've created here in red, a vast mosaic floor. Now look at each one of these squares. These are more or less uniformly in perspective. Quite a rough freehand drawing really, but it does the job. Now, think of a stone in each one of these squares. Not in the same place, but in a different place in each one. Now, the shingle is being forced to conform to the laws of perspective, but in a random sort of a way. Now, we've started masking the boat. We've masked a few objects on the beach. What I'm going to do now is finish the outline of the boat and then we're going to place this stencil over the rest of the boat like this because that's going to save us a lot of trouble. We're not going to have to mask all of this boat, just the edge. Once we do that, then we're going to start literally spattering masking fluid onto the paper from a toothbrush. And I don't want any of that to go on the boat at all, although this technique is very controllable. So, we'll go back to the boat. I'm going to finish this with a colour shaper, which I think is just about the easiest masking tool to use. And finish the edge, working all around the edge, create the shape of the boat. And we're just covering that whole sea area with this red colour. And this initial glaze will shine through when we put overlying glazes on. What I'm going to do now is just work the pigment up into the sky area carefully above the horizon, but I don't want it going right into the top of the sky. I want that to be white paper or at least fairly pale. So here we go. I'm going to just push it up. It's diffusing into the sky. I want it a little bit more strongly along the horizon, so we're putting yet more colour in along there. The sky is going to darken imperceptibly along the horizon, but I have to put a lot of colour in to get that effect. Clean the brush and put very pale colour up into the sky. Now we've finished putting colour in I'm just going to tilt it around a bit to even it out. And finally, this didn't matter with the beach, but I'm going to peel the tape off. If I don't do this in the sky, when the sky dries, the damp pigment gathered under the tape will bleed into the sky and create a mark. Now we've actually got a mark like that here, it's called a back run. In the beach it doesn't matter, the beach is going to be covered in pigment and texture, but in the sky it will. The sky is smooth and is far more sensitive to any marks that will subsequently show through. So there we go. That's the initial glaze for the sky complete. We've done the drawing, we've got this fairly high, long horizon. So the horizon is off the centre of the picture. So is the focal point. That's over to the right. 
I've also put the tree in from the other photograph on the right, and that's going to be very helpful. And we've got this river now leading diagonally into the composition. So basically, the composition is set. We've got good foreground depth and this long, dramatic skyline with the trees in the distance. So next, I'm going to mask the painting. What I'm going to do is mask sky holes, long vertical gaps between the tree trunks. That will mean I can just paint the mass of foliage right across the masking fluid. When I remove it, we'll have our sky, we'll have our gaps of sky between the trees. I don't have to do that everywhere, just in one or two places. I'll be masking foliage that's grown up in the middle of this shallow river, and again I'll be able to paint a very wet wash right across the foliage and the river will look realistic, it'll look wet and convincing. I'm just going to charge a couple of brushes, plenty of, plenty of colour, needs a certain amount of control, it may look chaotic, it is, but there's an element of control. Now, smaller brush, that's why I'm starting a little bit further up. I'm going to go back into the foreground with a big brush. And that's just produced a streak of colour which has dispersed into thousands of tiny blots, which is exactly what we want. Keep changing the brush size. This is the row of trees on the opposite bank of the river. And although there's quite a bit of work involved, there's nothing like as much as trying to paint all these leaves separately. And each set of marks is slightly different. So it's not like painting it with a sponge, which gives you an endless succession of similar shaped groups of marks. Now, we've just about finished this layer. I don't want to do any more now. It could probably do with a little bit more, but it's best to stop before you think you're finished than to take it over the top. Thank you.